Hey folks, it's Pat here. Got a chapter um, 10 question I want to cover today, and that's a hypothesis test for the population mean, the Z test. All right, you're going to do a lot of hypothesis testing in Alex from this point on, and so don't tackle these until you've done um, the problem on uh, determining the null and alternative hi alternate hypothesis and um, the type 1, type 2 error. Okay, <clears throat> just because those will kind of prime you for these. Now, these aren't too bad. I'm going to show you two different ways to do them. Um, the first way is, is using the Alex calculator, and the second way is using a website that I really like and will actually solve almost all of the problems in Alex that, that deal with hypothesis testing, except for some of the weird ones in like chapter 13 and 15. Okay, so, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, determine our null and alternate, alternate hypothesis based upon all this stuff, choose a test statistic, calculate that statistic, and then use either the p value method or the crit value method to actually make a conclusion. Can we actually support this claim? And so we're going to start with the hypotheses. Let's uh, pick out the claim here because that's our alternate hypothesis. Always start with that one. And so breaking strength of cables produced by a certain manufacturer have a mean mu of 1,850 pounds, standard deviation of 95. Claim that improvement in the manufacturing process has increased the mean breaking strength. So we want to actually evaluate this claim. And so their claim is our claim. And so they think that mu is now greater than 1,850. Okay. And so our null hypothesis, of course, is everything else, 1,850, so less than or equal to. This is a Z test. Uh, we know it's a Z test because we know the standard deviation for the population. Uh, we it also says so right up here. <laughs> all right, but it won't say this in the in the in the in the quizzes. All right, and so just remember if if you know your population standard deviation, it's a Z test. If you only know your sample standard deviation, it's a T test. Okay, so value of the test statistic. We can calculate this using the information given in the problem using this formula right here which to get a Z statistic, we need uh, X bar, which is our sample mean, minus mu, which is our population mean, divided by um, our standard deviation divided by the square root of our um, sample size. And so it looks a little janky, not too hard to do in the calculator. You start by taking your sample mean, which in this case is 1913, subtract our population mean, which was 1850. So you get a difference of 63, divide that, by our population standard deviation, again divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 17, right there. Bam, there you go. So our test statistic is 2.734, okay? And so your test statistic on all of these, except for later when you get to F distribution and stuff like that, is going to be somewhere between positive 3 and negative 3. If you get anything that's janky, like 14 dot something, something, you did it wrong, okay? So try it again. It should be somewhere between positive 3 and negative 3. Um, and so this one wants us to use the p-value method, which is actually easier than the crit value method. I'll show you both today. But the p-value method right here, all you have to do is take this guy, plug it in this calculator right here, but notice that this is p of finding a z-score less than that. And so we actually want to do 1 minus p because it's greater than, okay? So bam, there's our probability of finding something that is greater than that. So that's uh, 0 0.003, okay? And so yes, we can actually support that claim. All right, let's go ahead and give that a check right here and yes we got those all correct all right so now that's one way to do these the other way to do these is to actually take all this stuff over to um, a website which um, I've got a link to in Blackboard in the module three folder. It's called Hypothesis Testing Website, and it'll do all of this stuff for you, okay? But you have to pick out the right information. You have to build your, your null hypothesis, and you have to know which calculator you're using. And so that's this guy over here, which is um, Z-Test for one population mean. On this one, you have to punch in your high, and ignore all the pop-ups. Please be careful what you click on this site. It'll take you to really gnarly places on the web, okay? But the reason why I like this website, other than some of the other ones that are a little bit more clean, um, is because it will solve all the problems that you face in Alex, all right? And so you got to pull all the information out of the problem, which I've done here um, for this one. Uh, let me double check my hypotheses, make sure they're correct. Yes, less than or equal to 1850, and then greater than or equal to 1850. 
1913 population sample size and significance level okay so you click on this solve button and sometimes this this website takes a while all right to actually get you an answer but it will give you an answer that gives you all the information that you need to actually solve these problems here in Alex okay and so and let's see did I do that one correct yes okay so there we go we actually got a result here let's take a look and see so um, here's our z-stat uh, 2.734 or no that's our crit value um, so here's our z-stat 2.734 2.734 yep so that's the same and then um, our p-value is 0 .0031 concluded that the null hypothesis in this case is rejected okay and so regardless of whether it asks you for the crit value method or the p-value method this website will actually solve all those answers for you you just have to pick out the right information so here's our critical value here's our z test or our z statistic here's our decisions okay using both the crit value method and the p-value method and then finally if you get confused it gives you your final conclusion as well okay so this site's great just make sure you use and write calculator for like this one z test for one population mean that's for this problem here hypothesis test for the population mean using the z test but there are a lot of other calculators on here that you're going to use for different problems okay so there's a bunch of z test calculators and a bunch of t test calculators you want to make sure you're using the right one okay and so for this problem make sure you're using this guy right here all right so um we can do one more on Alex just for uh, just for uh, fun here real quick. Uh, if you get it, feel free to stop the video. But otherwise, um, let's go ahead and let's see if we can find a two-tail test here just so I can show you how that guy works. Uh, One-tail test. Uh, now, let's see if we can find a two-tail test. All right. <clears throat> Uh, two-tail test here we go let's do this one so two-tail test we don't know which direction we're interested in and so in this case um, we're gonna have an easier time writing the null and alternative hypothesis but sometimes the p-value and the conclusion gets a little bit um, more difficult so let's run through that manufacturer claims that mu of its light bulbs is 44 months standard deviation of these lifetimes is five months uh, 10 bulbs are selected at random mean lifetime is found to be 48 months can we conclude that the 05 level significance of mean light time differs? So whenever it says differs or has changed, it's a two-tailed test. It also tells you that right here. <laughs> All right, but that just means, no, nope, it is no longer, mu is no longer 44, whereas our null hypothesis, yep, mu is still 44. So this is a z-test. Let's go ahead and calculate our test statistic here real quick. And you know that math corrector site is kind of slow sometimes. So I'm sure there's a lot of high school kids out there using it in the background. <laughs> All right, but um, yeah, you know, so if you get good at actually, you know, calculating this, sometimes this is just faster. Okay, so here we go. Um, so we take our sample mean, which was 48, subtract our population mean, which is 44, divide that by our population standard deviation, which was five months. Divide that by the square root of our sample size, which was 10. Okay, there's our test statistic. So 2.5230. Uh, All right. So p value on this one, p value on this one is tricky, okay, because your p value is going to be split in half. All right, because you have half on one side, half on the other side. And so to do this one, since this is an equals does not equal, and remember, this crit value belongs on both ends of the spectrum, or this test statistic tests both ends of the, spe of the spectrum. It's positive and negative at the same time, all right, because we're interested in something on either side. All right, so this value right here, um, when we punch it in the P, Z calculator like this, we do that. Oops, so see how it's dot nine nine? Um, since this is positive, we have to do the one minus. All right, on this one, if you're gonna dot nine nine like that, you, you know you did it backwards, so just undo that and do one minus that. And so that gives us that crit value, but now we have to take that guy and multiply it by two, okay, to get our actual p value in this one zero dot zero one one. Oh, three values. Okay, so there's our p-value. Okay, so that's a little janky, and it takes a little getting used to on that one. Just remember, you're looking at both sides, so you have to multiply it. If you're using the crit value on this one, okay, like this, where you do this guy, remember, if you had an alpha of dot oh five, so it's 95 level confidence, or in this case, you know, this is level of significance dot oh five, remember, you'd have to divide that in two, so it'd be dot oh two five. 
okay, to give us our crit values on those. All right, this one's not asking us for that. So this guy right here, it wants it the dot oh five since this is less than this. Yep, we can make that conclusion. Give it a check here, see how we did. We got that one right. All right, so that's a hypothesis test for the population mean, z-test. Remember, do your hypotheses first, start with your alternate. So make sure that you get the right test statistic. Population standard deviation is known, so it's z. Calculate this using this, okay, or the website, either one. And then p-value method, remember with your p-value method, use this guy right here. If it's crit value method, use this guy right here. P-value, as long as it's less than your standard or your um, level of significance, yes, you can make that conclusion. Crit value depends on what you got up here okay so you know like in this one if our crit value was less than this okay then of course we couldn't reject if it was greater than then yes we could and likewise if this guy was negative if it was less than it then we could reject if it was greater than then no we could not okay so hope that helps um lots of stuff here but you know plow through these and next thing you know you'll be crushing out topics and alex left and right because there's quite a few of them like this all right so we'll see you there when we cover some of those